Hi, I'm Alison from Felt and Dandy and I wanted to tell you a little bit about our new Dragonfly Wings and our new um, downloadable Dragonfly tutorial. So the Dragonfly Wings are printed on the same lovely um, quality uh, acetate as our Bumblebee Wings are and you get six in a pack. They're about 10 centimetres across and the downloadable instructions um, they're just the same as our full kit instructions, but this isn't a kit. We're not putting the materials in a box because there's lots of different bits and really the idea is that you can use things from your craft stash. But the instructions, they take you through. You've obviously got your template um, to keep you right size wise. And then we've got a full set of instructions, just like in our normal kits, that take you through absolutely every stage and support you the whole way through. So you don't have to worry about going wrong. And today, really, I just wanted to share with you a couple of little tips and tricks that would help you and show you some of the materials that I used. And obviously, you can use anything from your craft stash. So I put the B on a pin, but you don't have to. I know a lot of you probably already have these little pins from us that you can use. and They, they work really well, and I'll show you that later. But you, you could do something like make a wreath like this, where these haven't got any legs on them. These were some of the practice um dragonflies I was making in the week before I was ready to do the uh, instructions and the tutorial. So there's lots of things that you can do with it and you can make them big, you can make them small, just depending on what size you decide to print out the template. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of little bits and pieces that I think will help keep you on track. Um, starting off with just wrapping the tail because there's a lot of wrapping in the um, dragonfly really and dragonflies are delicate so it's it's quite important to get it quite fine because otherwise you're going to get a very chunky looking creation so you're just going to use very very little wool and I've got some pale blue and some black carded wool here and you could you could use any color especially because we're going to be putting um, glitter on it to make it iridescent so iridescent glitter will just pick up any of the colors that are around it so it doesn't it really doesn't matter now one of the things I wanted to show you is that when you're trying to wrap something carded wool because the fibers are so short when you pull it they just come apart so if you're trying to wrap a pipe cleaner you're not really going to get very far so what you need to do is take a little bit of wool tease it out a little bit stretch it out so it's not too thick and then just fold it over on itself and that is going to strengthen it and you'll see that written quite a lot in the instructions so that's why I'm saying that so it's just when it when you pull it you're able to wrap it without it just spreading now, one thing I should have maybe showed you as well is that on the instructions, on the template sheet, you can see here the dotted line, whoops, the dotted line on the sheet shows you the length of the pipe cleaner you need to cut it to. So I'm just going to quickly cut my pipe cleaner and then I'm going to show you how I wrapped it. So I'll cut it to length. It's a pair of old scissors. Now, if you can see on here, the abdomen here comes a little bit below the end of the pipe cleaner and that's quite important and what one of the things I just wanted to share with you so we're going to get a little bit I think I pulled a bit already do it again so a little bit of wool just fold it over in half you don't want it to be thick you want it to keep it nice and fine so you get that sort of dragonfly delicate abdomen thing going on very technical term there so I'm going to hold it to the pipe cleaner I'll start just about three quarters of the way along and then I'm going to pull it quite taut and I'm going to wrap it all the way down the body. I mean, you can try twisting it as well, but you don't want to get undulations in your wool. So you can twist it along. Now, if you run out of wool before you get to the end, it doesn't matter. You can just add some more on. But you're basically going to twist it like that. It's really tight and it's fine. Yeah. And I'm just going to hold it on the mat between your fingers and poke along with your needle. Now you want to try and skim past the pipe cleaner to really um, get the get the fibres to grip round it so as it stays fine and the fibres are tight. So you can just twist it around a bit more. So you want to skim past the wire so you're pulling the fibres right into it and it will go hairy. Okay, so right the way through. So the fibres from one side are joining up with the fibres on the other side. And you can see here at the end where I've let go, it's all unravelled, but I'm just going to Roll it round again, like so. Hold it down tight. Now you just keep doing this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until it's nicely felted. 
So like at the end, as I said a minute ago, we want the tail to come a little bit further down than the pipe cleaner. So that's, I can feel here with my nail, that's the end of my pipe cleaner. So that's quite a lot. I only want it to come about a centimetre, or so, about half a centimetre past the end of the pipe cleaner when I'm finished. So I need about a centimetre now because I'm going to fold it over on itself. So I'm just going to hold it and I'm going to pull a little bit of that excess away and just fold it up. So where my nail is, is where the end of the pipe cleaner is. So I'm just going to fold that over, leaving this little bit of wool sort of spare, if you like, on the end. And then we're just gonna felt that through and just poke it through. So you don't have to use a single needle. You could use um, a multi-tool on this end, although it's quite tiny. Probably two, two needles, if you wanted to speed it up, might be better. So you just keep poking and let these little loose ends just blend away into the rest of the abdomen as you poke. So roll it, poke it, roll it, poke it. You keep going, you can poke it in around the edges we will trim it and refine it later, so you don't need to have to be too perfect. So you keep going until, so roll it, poke it, roll it, poke it, until it becomes nice and firmly felted like this one. And it's a bit hairy, but it doesn't matter because that's all going to get sorted out later anyway. So the rest of the body really is very similar. You're going to work through the different stages of the um, template to wrap it, to build up the abdomen and then to add the head. So for example, just to start on the um, abdomen, thorax, um, the bottom part of it here is black. Okay, so this is the first stage here, sorry. So we're gonna just wrap a little bit of black, then you would wrap the blue. So exactly the same as before, take a little bit of black, fold it over, okay? And then I'm just going to put my pipe cleaner on the template so as I can see, mark it with my thumbnail where the black should start and I'm gonna wrap it round. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it round really, really tightly. Like so, and again, if you're wrapping it, you think, oh my goodness, it's, it's expanding. Just hold what you've got and pull the excess away and wrap it round and then hold it into shape, pinch it into shape. So as it's sort of tapering down towards the um, abdomen here, like it is on the template and just poke it through and you continue just as you did before, but we're getting a bit chunkier now because we're moving up the body. So all the way round and you just keep going and you add the next stage of blue in just the same way until you end up with something like this. It looks a little bit like some sort of strange lollipop. Now, it obviously still needs a head, but can you see here, some of the pipe cleaner has been left protruding, just like it is in step one of the diagram. So that's when you get to the stage, you're going to make a little ball. So you're going to roll it up. And again, it tells you in the instructions how to do that. But you're going to make a little sort of pebble shaped head and then you can stick it on to the end of the pipe cleaner and it just helps keep it quite secure. So the main thing with the dragonfly that I was trying to figure out in my head was how do you get fluff to look iridescent and sort of almost metallic because that's really where we're, where we're at with the dragonfly they're not particularly fluffy so I was racking my brains and if you can see this is the same piece but it's had glitter and glue applied to it um to, you can hear it you hear that? It's quite, it's quite firm. So it gives it this really nice, firm, iridescent quality. And I've also, um, one of the next stages is I've created these segments in the body. So you can see here, it's sort of, you've got arrows on the instructions showing you where you're going to put the segments on the body as you're working. Now, to decorate it, you could um, needle felt your decorations on if you don't put glue and glitter and things on but you can't really do that um once it's hard and dry so what i've done sorry what i've done is use this really cool i really like this paint on glitter that i got a while ago so you know what it's like you've got stuff in your craft stash that you you don't use and then one day you think like oh wow i could use that so you can get again you can get this um online or you can get it Col Coleman's Craft Warehouse is local to me and they stock all of these um, things, the glitter, the glue, the black paint, and you can get the wool from them as well if you need to. And if you have a Coleman's near you, they will deliver it for you free of charge because obviously their shops aren't open at the minute, but they are doing delivery. But if, if you don't have a Coleman's near you, um, you can just order them online. So this stuff it comes 
in three colours. There's a greeny colour, a white one and a black one. And it's the white and the black that we're going to use. But as I said, you, you could use anything, but these look really quite nice. So all I did was just, we're just going to paint them on. And it shows you um, how to do it in the tutorial. But one little tip I just wanted to share with you for putting the, the stripes onto the um, abdomen was this that because if you're trying if you have it laying down you're trying to paint it it doesn't really work but if you just hold your brush to it and then actually rotate the dragonfly and hold your brush still so rotate the dragonfly around like so as you're working then you get a really nice neat band the whole way around so this dries up a sort of more, in a more subtle color than it looks at the minute it softens a little bit as it dries. So I think you could probably use like liquid eyeliner or something as well, but these are really quite nice. So again, I'll just show you that. So you just decide where your band's going to be. You can see it on the template and then just rotate it round like so. It's almost always easier to do it when you've not got a video in front of you, isn't it? So like so, got a wobbly hand. All right, there you go. So. I've got bands on him, so I'll leave him to the side. Now, the wings, we've had quite a lot of queries with the bumblebee of how you actually insert the wings and how you use them, so I just wanted to show you. So the wings come, if that light's a bit harsh on there, the wings come with these extra little sort of pointy bits on the end that you're going to cut out, so then you've got like a little plug to stick into the side of the... Um, Dragonfly, I can get Bumblebee out of my head now. So you can see here in this one, I've cut them out really neatly and they've got this little plug on the end. So all you're going to do is on the side, in good old Blue Peter fashion, there's one I've done already, on the side with a tapered bradle or an awl, you need one of these because it's this broader area here because the wool will shrink in really quickly um, when you take it out so by the time you go back to something with super glue on it the hole's closed over and it just all gets really messy now i'm going to push this right through and it's going to come out the other side of the body but that will just cloak that will just go you can just rub it with your finger a little bit and then when you put glitter and stuff on it as well it hides it so you work put the um bridle right through and always check that the wing is going to fit so you can put them shiny side up or textured side up, if you, whichever you prefer, and just check that it fits in nice and snugly. Whoops. In like so. Can you see that? So then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a hole on the other side, just so it's even, and check. Let me do the other one, because I've sort of squished that down when I'm holding it. Now, you only want very, very a very little bit of glue on this because otherwise if you get glue on your wing it's it's going to spoil it a bit so i'm going to use this super glue gel oh i've already put some out so i'll just recheck the hole double check it's fitting it is so i'm just going to dip don't go like this because that's when you get glue everywhere just dip the very tip of it in and out and straight it and really just push it in for a moment or two and hold it And you have a dragonfly with a wing. It makes such a difference. Maybe I'll put a bit of white paper behind it. You can see it more clearly. The light's a little bit glary. So, and then I'm obviously going to give him another one because otherwise he's going to have problems. So, and dip it in again. Again, very little. If you did have a bit of a disaster and you've got glue a bit further up the wing, just sprinkle a bit of glitter on it and it'll hide it and squish it down a bit. There you go. One dragonfly. So this is the stage that I put them onto the wreath. As you can see, this one's more delicate than my practice ones, but again, you could just enlarge them up if you wanted to do something a bit bigger. So now, the other thing I wanted to show you was doing the legs, and you'll see on the template that the wires for, doing, for putting it on a pin are at an angle, and that's quite important because otherwise, it's all going to get a bit in the way of the pin. You want the bee. The legs are straight to the to 
did I say B again, to the dragonfly, but you don't want the, the um, abdomen following the line of the pen really. So I've done it at an angle. And that That's really why you can see here on mine. So as it sits, but you could, you could do it whatever way you like. So this is just some really fine um, dark wire that I have lying around. But if you don't have any dark wire, we're going to paint little pads on the feet, but you could just paint the whole leg. So if you've got silver wire, gold or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So you're going to cut three little lengths. It doesn't particularly matter. It does give you measurement guides in the in the tutorial. But so we're just going to cut three lengths of this wire. Now I'm going to use, on our pins that we sell. They've got a, a side where the um, stem of it. Is joined on and it's got a it's got a totally flat side and we're going to use the flat side to lay the wings on the wings i'm doing well today to lay the legs on and then um attach it to the body at the same time while trying not to stick yourself to it which is always handy so what we're going to do maybe not do it on your good mat get a little bit of paper i've got some scrap here so i'm just going to give it a shake you do need to shake this stuff it tends to separate Especially if you if it's warm, I find. So don't keep it near a radiator. So just put a little bit on. Ooh, not too much. because And I'm avoiding the edges slightly. You can see that. Because otherwise, when I squish it onto the back of the dragonfly, it'll ooze out and I'll get very attached to my dragonfly. So I'm going to put the legs on. At the same... Oh, it's Alexa. So I'm going to... Lay one on. The answer to a question, I'll say whatever you like. Alexa, stop. Well, that was different, wasn't it? So, lay the three legs on, and they'll start to grip really quite quickly. Oops. Okay. Like so. And then find your dragonfly. So I'm going to position him on these um, legs so that they're coming straight out the side of his body. So you just pop, pop him on. Hold it, squish it down. You really want to press it tightly so as it grips. So hold it for about, I don't know, about 10 seconds or so. Really squeeze it in just to make sure that joint's really um, secure. And then what we're going to do, just while I'm waiting for this to dry, we're going to bend the legs and put a little dob of, little blob of paint on the end. So now then, oh, a bit sticky. So I'm going to leave that one to dry because actually I forgot I've already got one here so this one he's got his legs on but they don't look a great shape they just sort of like sticking out the side so on the template it shows you um how to bend the shape of the legs so I'm just going to quickly using the guide I'm just going to bend I tend to bend one side looking at the template and then just mirror the other side I find that works quite easily for me so Bend it down, twist it round, just nip it in with your fingers, like so. So I've started to bend the legs, and then I'm going to copy it on the other side, and then you just need to um, trim them. Just watch you don't snip the wings at the same time. So give it a little bend, follow what you've got on the other side, like so. So they're really, they're more like a daddy long legs at the minute, you can see that. They're really, really long, so I'm just going to snip them. Use old scissors or some wire cutters, whatever you have to hand. So, and as I say, just keep your eye on those wings. So now I've got a dragonfly with the right sort of length legs, apart from that one seems a bit longer. So we'll chop that, give it a little bend. So now what I'm going to do is use a little bit of this stuff. I really like this. I use it in quite a lot of things. So it's not expensive. How much was that? £1.49. So you can see it there. That works nicely. But you could use acrylic paint or anything that's going to dry and sort of be quite permanent. You could use, um, you could even use the acrylic glue and when it put little blobs of it on and when it's dry, just colour it with a Sharpie pen. So you know, really, you can, you can use anything. So... To finish his legs off, I'm going to bend them down a little bit, just away from the wings, so I don't end up with black blobs on the wings. Because I do have some markings on the wings, but not big paintbrush jobs. So hopefully I brought my paintbrush I have. 
So I'm just going to get a fine brush and you don't want to work it too much because otherwise it's just going to come off. So I'm just, I've given myself a little blob of black paint and I'm just going to dip my brush into the tip of it so as it's sort of loaded with a little blob and I'm literally just going to rub it over the end of the wires. It just finishes it off nicely and it also means it's not sharp. So I'm just going to put a little blob on each end like so. So I'm just almost more like rubbing it off rather than painting it and he'll get his little legs with the pads on his feet. Okay. So you need to leave them to dry and you can just take the end off the pin, pop him in your mat to dry or drop him in your mat to dry. So pop him in your mat to dry, maybe do it like that. It worked perfectly when I was practicing. So leave him to dry. I'm going to move him out of the way. And we're pretty much done. Let's have a little tidy up. So I have another one lurking up here behind me, which I'll just grab. So, oops. Nine. So this one, his little feet have dried and he's got some wool stuck to him now. You can give them a trim if they've got bits of fuzz on them. Especially if he's been lurking in my wool stash over there. So this is the finished little article now the other thing and i didn't put this in the tutorial but it just dawned on me that the little bags of crimes that we um have now gladly got back in stock that i know a lot of you have might be quite nice on as well so you could leave it more natural like this one that i've got on or if you can open the packet okay you could put the teensiest little dab of glue i'm going to use the leftover bit of my pipe cleaner and just dab it on to the edge of the crime. I can just see Nick's face when he sees I've been busy putting crimes on things. And I'm just gonna stick it on the top of his head. So he, be, he can be an emperor dragonfly, can't he? You gotta have bling. So again, hold it down for a moment or two so as it sticks and press it in. I think that's quite cute. So, and then you can give it a little um, sprinkle of glitter if you like. Don't have to, obviously. But it's quite nice because some of the bits will just um, sit on the on the surface of the wing. So just give it a little shake. So we're after that iridescent quality again. Shake off the excess. And you have your Emperor Dragonfly. And then the one I had from before. So on the pearl pin. So without the crime. And you can see the markings on them as well there. And I think the, the um, light might just be picking up on the camera. You can see the little flecks of glitter if you like that sort of thing. You can just sprinkle the glitter on at the end and it will just sit delicately on the wing. Or if you want to leave them just plain because obviously they've got that nice shimmer anyway. You don't have to do that at all. So whatever you like. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And it's given you a little bit of an insight into what our new um dragonfly tutorial is all about so as i say you can get the instructions to download on our etsy shop um there'll be a link on the video as well and on our facebook page and also the same for the wings you get six pairs on the on the packs of wings as well so i hope you really um, enjoyed this little um video of tips and tricks and um, we hope to see you soon. Cheerio, bye.